Hey there, Unethical members. It is Celeste, the best host of Unethical Podcast. I'm just kidding. That's Richard, obviously. I'm just here to let you know that what we are getting into today is actually part one of what will probably end up being a six-part series. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because some people are like me and you don't like cliffhangers. So if you don't want to have to wait for the next episode of the saga, I would suggest waiting until the final part drops. This was a very, very long process to research and record. Huge thanks to RJ McCarthy, one of the dicks on the Private Dicks podcast, for being our guest for this episode. Uh, He was actually the one that suggested it to me. So you can thank him for this absolute horror story that I'm about to tell you. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy it. And as always, keep those bushes huge. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. Yeah, we'll just tell the listeners right off the bat. Strap on, listeners. Um, this this script is fifty nine pages and forty thousand words. It's a book. You wrote a book on <laughs> it's yeah. Celeste Thesis. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a doctorate in fortune. <laughs> yeah. Well, this episode's going to be pretty tame. We're just getting to know a little itty bitty. The crazy stuff doesn't start happening for a little while, but, you know, to to know how a man um, went to jail for incest, you got to know how he lived. Uh, this sounds like how I started Edgar Allan Poe. That's why was, I said it. I know, that's why I was, that's <laughs> I mean, why I was laughing. <laughs> I mean, let, let's be fair, though. I, n- nobody saw that last minute half court shot coming uh, it, it, from this guy. I like that. <laughs> This shit is so off the wall that, okay. uh, yeah, it could not have begun or ended better. God, I'm so uncomfortable already. <laughs> you should be. You know what I say? If uh, you can't keep it in your pants, keep it in the family. All right, let's do this. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't say that. You- yes. You can. That's the title of the episode. <laughs> yeah, that's the title of the episode. There, I know nothing about it. All I heard was there's incest, so I made an incest joke. What do you want from me? I, to be fair, I just mean as, as, a, as a as a public person uh, and a father, I just feel it might be in your best interest to. Nah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a character. You should see what I'm like actually at home. I'm uh, wear a t- suit and tie, <laughs> and I go to my office job at the bank. And I invest uh, millions of dollars into stocks and bonds, mostly NFTs now. Oh, sure. sweet. Just just ways to, so that your money's untraceable so that you can buy child pornography. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I sell it. I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Those, that's what my NFTs are. <laughs> nice. It sounds like from what he's saying, he doesn't need to buy it. He just makes his own. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It's not child porn if I give out my nakeds from when I was a kid, right? No, it so is. They're mine. No, it is. But if it's me, and no, I'm like, I don't care. No, it is. I mean, I, I mean, like, like legally, absolutely. But, but like, like morally, still also yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm consenting to this. I'm consenting yeah. to you look, looking at my naked child body. You know, it'd be uh, cool if I victimized myself retroactively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was joking. I was making a joke. But now apparently I canceled us. Can't say things. <laughs> we'll get started on this. All right. So let's go. Christopher Weston Chandler was born February 24th, 1982 in Charlottesville, Virginia. And yes, we're starting right at the beginning. Good. As we should. He was born to middle-aged parents, Bob Chandler, who was 54 years old and had two children from a previous marriage, and Barbara Chandler, who was 40 and had one child from a previous marriage. Uh, According to a video Chris made for them for their wedding anniversary, they met in a jazz club where Bob was singing and Barb approached him after the show. And uh, 
there isn't a ton of information on the relationships between Bob and Barb and their firstborn children, but Barb was said to be very controlling, manipulative, and abusive to her firstborn son, and he left when he was able and did not maintain any contact with her. Bob did not have a good relationship with his children either. In fact, one of the few testimonies of Bob <clears throat> came from Barb's first son, Joseph Cole Smithy, who said Bob was a mean son of a bitch. Hmm. You said he was singing. Was he singing when he met her? Is that what you said? Does he, was he like a jazz person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. I got it. Yep. Uh, so Bob and Barb considered Chris to be their second chance not to be incredibly shitty parents this time. I'm guessing that didn't go too well. <laughs> I think they did the, the the best that they could with Chris, all things considered. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna doubt hard hard doubt on that claim, but Barb Barb that. is pretty toxic. But considering they had an autistic child, especially one that got up to the shit that he got up to, man, I would have just moved in the middle of the night. I wouldn't fucking deal with that. No, I just I think they were neglectful because well, first off, they're old as shit um, compared to uh, the average parent um yes uh, someone i mean 54 and you have a child that is that's like irresponsible like <laughs> that is so fucking out there like you, you can't be doing that you know what i mean i would not want a newborn at that age it's hard enough now having little having toddlers at my age like having toddlers at 41 it's hard enough but i couldn't imagine having another like 13 years on me and having to run around after a little one it's just yeah you just check out which is why i think he got up to the shit he got up to Mm, yeah uh the chandler family learned that chris was autistic when he was very young they could tell early in his life he wasn't like the other kids his age uh chris claimed that he uttered his first word when he was two months old but he stopped talking completely around 18 months uh chris claims this period of silence um and he believed his autism in general was caused by a traumatic event where his babysitter became angry with him and locked him in a dark room surrounded by toys all by himself. Yeesh. Autism obviously isn't something that can come from an event. Chris doesn't really have a great grip on reality, which will become more and more evident as the story goes on. But Chris actually wouldn't speak again for six years. I don't know what to say. I'm thinking about last week's episode with freaking being locked in a place for a long time and how that affects you (laughs) it's not good (laughs) well this was just one incident apparently his parents his parents had a really bad habit of like going to bat for chris when chris is wrong all the time so i assume if chris told them this well he wouldn't have because he didn't speak but i assume if they found out they would have fired the babysitter but he said it only happened once Hmm. uh when chris was seven um he was at a toy store with his mother when he noticed a gobot i don't know if you guys remember those gobots those knockoff transformers more or less yeah but uh he picked up the package and he began to read it aloud that was the first time he'd spoken in six years and uh, chris said that during those six years he would communicate by screeching and through physical gestures um he described himself as troublesome which makes me think that the physical gestures were probably just hitting and throwing shit when he was silent did he actively purposefully be silent and and just communicate with chirps or is that all he was capable of doing while he was silent you know what i'm saying no he knew how to talk okay he just didn't good Mm, yeah he just didn't for six years weird okay so for much of his childhood his only friend was the family dog patty who chris had an inseparable relationship with but when he was seven or eight he befriended a little girl in the neighborhood named sarah and he considered this girl his first friend and, quote, gal pal, a term that he would use well into his 30s to describe the few women that became part of his life. He always said nice things about her, but from the outside, Sarah actually took advantage of his intellectual debilities, disabilities and gullibility to torment him for fun. So on one occasion, she told him that Casper the Friendly Ghost was living under his house and encouraged him to crawl into the crawl space to meet him. And once Chris was inside, she locked him in until his parents came looking for him and let him out. Uh, Despite this incident, many others, Chris believed that she was his best friend, and he was very excited to start school with her. Uh, Chris and Sarah were separated when Chris transferred schools in fourth grade, but the two did reunite in 2003 when they were in their 20s, and Sarah came to spend Christmas with his family. Chris would go on after this to have an imaginary feud with Sarah's fiance in the following years, but we'll get into that later. I didn't I didn't know all that. That reads like a the start to a fucking splasher. That 
I, that's what I was thinking. This is uh, this is getting ominous. Uh, fourth grade was rough for Chris. He claimed that while he was in Nathaniel Green Elementary School, he was abused by his teachers that didn't know how to handle autistic children. He recalled one occasion where he was held down by his teachers while they recorded him screaming. Uh, and he also recalled another incident where his principal demanded that he sit on his lap. And while he was on his lap, the principal made vulgar comments. So none of these incidents were ever confirmed. Um, his parents did try to take the school board to court over them, but the school board responded that they could either drop the issue or Chris would be banned from mainstream education and transferred into a special needs school. So his parents dropped the case and decided to homeschool him instead. And Chris attributed his homophobic period later in his life to his experience with this principal. So this it's, this guy's autistic, right? Yes. I, I feel like he was born at 82, you said? Mm -hmm. So I'm 83. So he would have been like, I would have been the same years growing up. And I don't think people that back then would have known how to deal with autistic people in the way they do now. Like schools are way different than they used to be when I was a kid uh, in that regard. So uh, my brother's two years older than me and he's on the spectrum and they didn't know how to handle him. And I'm 10 years younger than you. I remember kids being in my class, throwing themselves around and like having tantrums and freaking out. And the, the teachers just being like, did they give you guys all boomerangs to throw at them? <laughs> yeah. So we, once they, when they did that, we'd take them outside and tie them to a tree and then we'd like, you know, throw boomerangs at them and, it just it didn't help though so oh yeah that's so sad i'm glad things are better now <laughs> they use like foam boomerangs now yeah yeah it's not not wood ones anymore we use like cool. um recycle and they're made from recyclable materials too so oh we, shit yeah ah australia is so woke yeah <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day it wasn't even an autistic kid it was just a koala oh, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that wandered into the school one day when you start school here, it's like when you go to Hogwarts, you get to pick your animal. So, like, you can have a koala or a kangaroo or a frilled neck lizard. A bilby? So, cool. A bilby, yeah. Um, what I was going to say, though, is so since they didn't know how to deal with this kid, and I'm not condoning them, like, pinning them down and stuff like that, but I understand why the parents would want to homeschool, right? Like, they're not yeah. going to know what to do, and we barely know what we're doing, but at least, ugh, fuck, I, I don't know. It's... I feel bad for the teachers in that because like you were kind of slamming teachers, but like what are, they didn't fucking know. Plus it was the eighties. People were playing rock and roll all the time. They didn't know what to do. They're just fucking with their mullets. They were probably smoking in the classrooms, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Hold him down and give him a cigarette. Yeah. Maybe that'll calm him down. <laughs> that'll calm his nerves. Yeah. yeah, the magazine commercials say it calms him down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. God damn. Sometime in the late eighties to early nineties. Chris was at a local shopping mall with his parents. It was Christmas time and there was an interactive animatronic show called the Leonard Bernstein Symphony Orchestra, which captured Chris's attention. So on this particular day, there were very few people in attendance for the show. So the conductor, Mr. Leonard Bernstein himself, paid extra attention to Chris. When Chris told Leonard his name, the person that was controlling Leonard misheard him and called him Christian for the rest of the show. Uh, Chris decided that this was a sign from the goddamn heavens, and from that point on, he insisted to be called Christian. He believed it was like a Christmas miracle, and his parents obliged. His name was legally changed to Christian the following year. No last name anymore? Just Christian? Like McLovin. <laughs> his birth name was Christopher, so his new name was Christian Christopher Weston Chandler. <laughs> okay. <sighs> he hyphenated his first name. <laughs> Christian Christopher. Wow. I thought it was because Chris Chan, and it was like Christian. So he just eliminated the whole thing. Now I'm Christian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's why, I, that's why I said that. I thought you just like, I'm one name now. Yeah. No, he actually gets many, many, many names. Every time he changes his name, he just adds it. So he oh, ends okay. up having like six names by the end of this thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like how you said every time he changes his name, like we all do that every once in a while. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> but he just keeps it. <laughs> yeah. He does. He changes his name twice. And then adds another name. We'll get into it. <laughs> okay. Um, so Chris returned to public school when he started sixth grade at Providence Middle School. Uh, Chris and Bob moved out to Chesterfield County to attend school while Barb remained in his childhood home so she could keep her job. During middle school, I didn't mention this, but Bob is a retired engineer for General Electric. I forget what Barb does. She's like a phone operator or something or a secretary for General Electric. A woman job. Yes. Classic. Classic woman <laughs> 
one of those things. <laughs> During middle school, Chris developed his first crush. Uh, he said he lost interest in her after he found out that she smoked. But uh, they continued on as, as friends for quite a while. Uh, he later found out that his father was paying her to be his friend. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. How much, though? Would you do that? Like, if some, <laughs> if some dad was like, here's a hundred bucks, come hang out with my kid for an hour. Obviously, He was that. giving her like 10 bucks a week or something like that. Oh, that sucks. That means they might have also been friends. That's a shitty amount of money. Um, <laughs> she could just mow the lawn and get that probably. Like that. I guess. I don't know. I <laughs> I was also just friends with kids that I felt bad for. Like I would like hang out with them. And no one was paying me. So like if the job got too bad, I would just quit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which happened. So yeah. So you should have negotiated better. Yeah, I, yeah. I should have. I should have gone to their parents. Like <laughs> that's how I shop it around. I, I get to know them a little bit and like hang out with them, and then they're like, "Hey, can you come over for dinner?" And then I'm like, "Oh yeah, sure." And then I'm like, "All right, Mr. Smith, we need to speak. <laughs> Here are the terms. Here's the contract. Six weeks." Yeah, <laughs> this is an upcharge for how much he smells. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bunch of ticks. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Chris also said that he had um, a very good relationship with one of his special relationships, he called it, he called it um, with one of his teachers who taught him better self-regulation skills and how to cope better with bullies. Uh, when Chris graduated middle school, Barb retired and came to live with him and his father in Chesterfield County, reuniting him with his beloved dog, Patty. Uh, in 1993, Chris won a competition hosted by Sega, uh, the video game company, where the viewer had to listen for the phrase at the end of every Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog episode for one week, and then mail in a letter saying what the phrases were. There were 100 winners in the United States, each receiving a $1,000 shopping spree at KB Toys. Uh, it would be worth about twice that much now. That, that seems like a lot of effort when they just could have sent in uh, their medical record with a statement by their doctor saying that they're autistic. Because that kind probably of. would have been an instant win then. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, you don't have to do it. We know you have the capacity. <laughs> All right. Uh, so his win triggered an obsession in Chris for entering competitions and probably contributed, not competitions, contests, like where you don't actually have to like be good at anything um, and probably contributed to a sense of entitlement he had about winning them and being given things for the rest of his life. That being said, he likely already had those things from uh, his parents who were like really big into overcompensating for being really shitty the first time around. Um, but Chris grew up to have gross overreactions whenever he lost at things. All right, so Chris went to Manchester High School and he described those as the best years of his life. He loved school, especially Spanish. Part of his Spanish class was identifying yourself in a Spanish name to insert yourself deeper into the culture. And Christian enjoyed being Ricardo so much that he would use it to sign his name in other classes and considered it to be part of his ever-changing name. He also, for no reason, would randomly answer questions on assignments in Spanish in other classes. And I assume why RJ is laughing is because Ricardo in Spanish is Richard. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, no, I'm mainly laughing just because, like, that just tracks so well for his personality. Like, that's just, like, such an annoying kid thing to do. Like, just <laughs> be in fucking algebra and you're like, si, senor. <laughs> 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 or then just, like, handing in your fucking homework and it's just, like, signed Ricardo. And then, like, the teacher's like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. Ricardo Cristiano Chan. Uh, yeah I, like i mean like i feel honestly like I'm, I'm not like without empathy like i feel i feel bad for this guy sans you know the inexcusable things he did but like th it's like i know i've i've known people like that do you know what i mean like yeah oh yeah oh for sure <laughs> universal across you everybody went to school with a kid like that and you're just like mm. oh why are you you know yeah and they just can't <laughs> help it why are you like this <laughs> yeah they're just compelled to be as fucking annoying as possible <laughs> and this is yeah. like just the apex predator of those type of people is chris chan mm -hmm. okay. it's true i'm so intrigued but yeah anyway obsessed with spanish he was now christopher christian ricardo weston chandler ricardo 
fucking incredible. Which is another dick. That's that's dick. No, he's not part of us at all. He's not joining the crew. No. Sorry. There's no Ricardos allowed in private. Well, case. shit. I had them all signed up to replace Rick Getz. <laughs> well, in 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 uh in chris's defense uh the, they don't necessarily identify as someone having a dick anymore this is much later and uh they wouldn't be a good fit so okay i suppose i suppose it could be a woman named richard you won't you wouldn't take on a, a woman host named richard just because it's a woman don't be so sexist rj <laughs> Fair enough. I would I would like to formally request applicants from any woman named Richard. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, if we can find a woman named Richard, to, we kick our we, we kick found Rick one. Gets out. <laughs> Is it like boy a boy named Sue? But <laughs> a boy yeah. named Richard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. While in high school, he was the water boy for the basketball team. Uh, Chris oh was actually God. really outgoing, even though he was. Yes, I know they make the special kid the water boy. <laughs> no, no, stop laughing. <laughs> it's just no, no, no. Stop. That's not at all. What I, it's just every time. It's just the most expected fucking thing. Like, yes. he's just always rising to that fucking like m- yep. me, 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 annoying kid thing every time. Yeah. Hmm. Without context, I kind of just feel bad for him. You know right yeah no i mean yeah. I, it, it it's 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 sad this is mostly sad um yeah but if, if you have a mean bone in your body which i feel that we all do you're probably gonna laugh a lot <laughs> well look i put it this way put it this way i'm not opposed to laughing at anyone but so far it's just sad but i'm sure i'm sure i'm gonna laugh <laughs> you will. i i <laughs> think maybe i'm i might be meaner than richard though okay i think you may like did you bully kids in school at all <laughs> I wouldn't say bullied and I got bullied from like the 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 jockey people but I would bully them to the point with my mouth where they would like push punch me so like <laughs> I would I would bully them with my mouth I'd be like yeah how do you like this on your penis <laughs> <laughs> got you you motherfucker I kept calling one and get one of the guys one time like undercut because everyone in my grade had like an undercut like like a fucking mushroom cut with a, everybody and then yeah. eventually uh, yeah. everyone in grade nine, that was what it was. And then er- eventually everyone got rid of the undercut except for one guy. And he was like a dick to me. He was like the hockey jock. So I just kept the undercut for like weeks straight. And then uh, at, cer- at a certain point, I got ketchup poured on my head from the jock guy. But I called him the undercut for like six months. So I think I won that. You know what I mean? Like when I got the ketchup yeah. on the head, I was like, then I win. You just made me win. But I bet yeah. you he thinks about that to this day. Me calling him the undercut. Yeah. <laughs> all right that's that's some like definite polite disney channel style bullying there i was not expecting that well no I, i'm not a mean person i will recuse myself from this conversation all right so <laughs> yeah chris is really outgoing um like rj is basically saying is he's annoying outgoing um really awkward uh but people generally didn't dislike him chris recalled one incident where he wanted to be off the school bus first as he did every day. But one day, another boy wanted to be off first, and this resulted in the other boy punching Chris and breaking his glasses. And as a result of this, Chris was moved into the special needs gray green short bus, where he said he hated being around the quote, slow in the minds. Slow in the minds. Yeah. I feel like if I say that, I'm going to be called a bigot, so I'm not saying it again. Yeah, don't. Just stop. Keep it to that quote. But like this is this is another good example of like people like him. Like he, he it's the type of kid who's like, ah, you kind of feel bad for him because he's like a little weird and shit. But then you know something bad happens and they immediately like fire off the n word or something at like one of the kids in school and it's just like, oh shit, they're not. You know what I mean? Like it's not like always indicative that they're just a good person. Oh, I know. I am. Trust me, I'm fully aware of that. Just because you're whatever doesn't mean you can't be a dickhead, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, so Chris uh, Chris had always been more inclined to befriend women. Um, he did have one male friend in his high school. It was like the captain of the basketball team, wasn't actually his friend, same old, you know, whatever. Anyway, he had quite the group of gal pals that he would spend time with in class, at lunch, and at his house sometimes. Um, And it was later speculated that these girls were actually friends with him due to an arrangement made by his principal. Uh, Not confirmed. 
Chris frequently developed crushes on his female friends, but none of them were ever interested in him, uh, though they were all very kind to him about it. Um, at some point in high school, Chris started wearing the same shirt every day, and he wore this shirt for years. The rugby shirt, red and blue stripes, and it has a gold thing over the left breast, a gold shield thing. Anyway, years he wore this shirt every day. I, I feel like he outgrew it. Like, it looks a little tight on him right now. Mm. You, know, you could have changed shirts. Nope. So the first video Chris ever recorded, and... Anybody who knows Chris Chan, that's like a big part of his thing is YouTube videos. That was a lot of what made him go viral. The first video he ever recorded, it wasn't uploaded to YouTube or anything, uh, was a poem assignment for one of his classes when he was 16. And he called the poem The Song of Christian, and it was loosely based on Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. And because I love you, I have the poem. Yes. Uh I hear America singing as I sing of myself and you experience as I experience. The problems of yourself are my problems. The youth and the young singing cries of happiness as you have sung the song of laughter. At age six weeks, I sang the song of laughter. Then at one and a half years of age, the Lord put the mute button on me. Those are my parents' song. They pulled me through to talk again at age seven. I am now 16 years old and good at talking enough to help me achieve new goals and Mario Raceway Raceway records, and to finish my homemade Nintendo Power magazine. The magazine's songs, the ballad of Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Boy, the rudeness of the teenager's song, the despicable mention of rude words and D-R-U-G-S. I am not afraid to speak, despite the hazardous flukes in America's song. My song that I sing, although I talk well, my peer relationship is low and my loneliness is off the scale. Did you say that was a poem? It, yes. What kind of poem? The poem where you just say stuff, but then you insert space, like enter at weird <laughs> spaces. So it's like stacked. And that's recorded. Yeah. He, was that pr- Was he proud of that? Like, was this something he was very proud of? Yes. I mean, like, here's your context. He's 16 and 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 on the spectrum. So like, but the I think the important thing to know is that. Uh, 20 some odd years have gone by and he's exactly the same so (laughs) (laughs) i'd like to know i'd like to know what the walt whitman poem is like i'd like to play them beside each other because you said it's close to no no she did say loosely based yeah yeah loosely based (laughs) you didn't know walt whitman went hard on mario kart yeah (laughs) walt whitman was like doing mega fucking sonic speed runs bro I can, oh, yeah. I imagine, I imagine he's a Bowser guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, what women learn to read with Nintendo Power Magazine? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Richard's got one right Richard's there. got fucking Nintendo <laughs> Power Magazine. You know, Chris Chan's been in that thing twice. Get the fuck out of here. Which, which, which issue do you know? Um, we actually might not get into it until next time. So if you have them, all the better. I'll have to dig through them. But I mean, I, who knows what's been pilfered over the years, but... What do you have pirates coming through your room? No, I what I do at my shows, I give away shit. So if I have a double issue, but sometimes I fuck up and I give away one that I shouldn't have. Just your possessions in your house. You're just like, come to my show. I have I have this bagel slicer. You you don't even know how true that is. <laughs> Look at this. You want to see something else? Right now, I'm trying to get rid of this fucking. Uh, th- this is used. This is a used deep fryer that will be that will be given away as a prize at one of my shows. <laughs> wait, wait, what else? A do I got used deep fryer. <laughs> yeah, a used deep fryer. Anybody want this glad trash bag I washed out in the sink? I have uh, canned mackerel that I'm giving away. Oh, in my show. a nice can of mackerel from the Dollarama. I see. Yeah, I, I do lots of Dollarama stuff too. So glad there's a digital background because I don't want to know what the fuck that room looks like behind you if you're just yeah. pulling these things out of there. <laughs> oh, I have all my, this is my like office, all my shit's in here. So I just have stuff within arm's reach. A mountain of macro cans and used appliances. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, no. your realistic oh. situation is Richard's a hoarder and his wife is like, this is a problem figure yeah. it out and he's like i know <laughs> i'll get rid of it at my shows well at my shows 
<laughs> well, that's what I do. I, I, my grandma is one of those people that like gives me all her shit all the time. She buys too much shit and she just gives me shit. I come home, there's fucking bags full of shit. Okay, what do you yep. want me to do with this, grandma? I fuck, I'll give it away at my shows. It was on sale, so I bought 12. You need one, grandma. You need one. You're by yourself. What are you doing? Yep, exactly. That's a grandma. My <laughs> nan does exactly the same thing. She's like, I bought 47 packets of these Tim Tams that are about to, they go off next week. So you've got to eat them real fast. And they're fucking like dark, dark chocolate and orange flavor or something. And I'm just like, oh, gosh. <laughs> the world's, the global economy of consumerism would crumble without grandmas. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, mate. <laughs> Sorry, tangent, my fault. No, it's all good. Chris apparently got pretty into being in front of a camera because uh, he kept going with this video after the assignment. And I think he actually turned the whole thing in. Um, he introduced himself as the host of the Christian Chandler show, complete with fake stadium cheers. Has he given up the Ricardo by now? It's not, he's no. not Christian Ricardo. No, he still is. Well, he's not announcing himself as that. Why aren't he's we saying Ricardo? Just Christian Chandler there? in this. I'm just fucking, I'm sorry. <laughs> um he talks about some of his current projects mostly revolving around video games which would become a permanent passion for chris and the source of many of his problems later in life as well um during this video he takes a break to yell at his english teacher for giving him an f and accusing her of being ableist uh this would be the first of many 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 videos of him yelling about stuff Mm. Chris was like really creative. He worked on a lot of projects at this point in his life, including stop motion videos where he used his built in Game Boy camera to take photos of Legos he'd built. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's actually super cool. I don't even care. That's amazing. I had I had one of those and it was fucking incredible. I had the camera and the printer with like the roll of the sticker paper. Yep. It was so oh, wow. sick until my dad stole it and sold it for crack money. Oh, Oh, good yeah. yeah i really wanted this to get sad i wonder how much crack yeah. he got up for it maybe it was a decent amount of crack i hope it was not a lot i hope it was like <laughs> i hope it was not that much and then he just had to sit with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey dad where's my lego camera uh... <laughs> oh if you think i fucking talked to him after that <laughs> we haven't spoken in 30 years yeah <laughs> sorry i'm laughing at your pain I, I, I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, during these stop motion projects, he would give the characters names based on people in his life himself and the characters from TV or video games. Um, a lot of the stop motion videos that he made played out fantasies in his life. Um, he was really into Pokemon as well. This is a different point. Didn't sound like it, but it is. Uh, he was really into Pokemon, so much so that he designed dozens of his own Pokemon cards I wish I could remember what they were. I meant to put them in the script. One of them was like an autism Pokemon. Oh, it was like a plant-based autism. Anyway, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, you're setting me up for that. I'm not doing it. Fuck you. Just <laughs> mute yourself, Richard. Mute, mute, mute. <laughs> Say it. Five leaf head. Five head leaf. I don't know. I'm not good at Pokemon names. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and he would also cosplay as Ash, Ash Ketchum just all the time, no matter where he was, for no reason. Right. And he started his own Pokemon website. So that's pretty big. What age was this? What age was he? This was all when he was like 16. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, he creates his own Pokemon website. Ultimately, what this website was used for was to distribute his comic book god this guy is a jack of all trades he is very yeah. very creative man oh oh yeah, yeah. wait You're killing the, it the, this is the good part <laughs> right chris's legacy his downfall and the greatest of his life accomplishments was the creation of sonichu the electric hedgehog pokemon sonichu is the bastard child of sonic the hedgehog and pikachu two of his favorite characters wow all right, I'm Sonichu. on your side now. This I like just the like. Imagine being there while he's doing this annoying shit. Like I'm just annoyed hearing about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's he... anyways. Sonichu, guys, look at Sonichu. I've never heard how he talks. It sounds like, but 
I can imagine it's like that. Look at Sonichu. It's it's so much <laughs> more annoying than you could possibly imagine. Are we not going to do any videos of him this um, episode? I do have some. Just if if you could just give Richard like a taste. I should. Yeah, just that he's got to know that voice because it's so so many more things will make sense. You're right, but to afford it. Is impossible for me because I don't have his address and he lives in Sweden. Bitch! Ivan! Kzilberg! Also known as. Hey! Hey! W! D! Pie! Oh my does god. Does not live here at 14 Branch Line Court, Rockersville, Virginia, 22968. Yeah, uh, that, uh. Oh. That was a full address. <laughs> He docks himself so many times. It, it just kept happening. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So that's Christian. <laughs> all right. So uh, Sonichu features very heavily in his life's work. Uh, and Sonichu was created as a way to avoid copyright, not by using either of them, either Sonic or po- uh, Pikachu, in his various projects that he shared with the world via his website. Um, And as you will see behind me here, as you saw in the video, most of the photos and videos of Chris depict him wearing a clay Sonichu head he made around his neck, which he calls his Sonichu medallion. So there's Sonichu right there. It's just Mm -hmm. yellow Sonic with Pikachu ears. Yeah. (laughs) That's a uh, good creation. Yep. Well, it is, it's what he got famous for. All right, so another one of Chris's passions, though quite fleeting in the grand scale of things, was poetry, which uh, I assume blossomed from his song of Christian. Uh, One of his written works was called the Valentine's Day Hymn, and it was just delightful. And because I love you, here it is. Yes. (laughs) On the day of love and romance, hearts and cupids fly around. The arrow of Cupid hits a man, and that man falls head over heels for a pretty gal. Cards and candy go hand to hand, expressing the thoughts of love put in the poem. Kisses are shared and fireworks are blown. The only way that could happen is if they kissed on the 4th of July. On a date, the man could not pay the bill, so his date slammed her door in his face. Red and pink are hearty colors, because that's how the hearts were originally drawn. The man's coat over a puddle, the maiden walks. Then the man trips and pays the laundry bill. Under the moonlight, the couples of the world kiss, but unfortunately for a few, they are interrupted by their parents. Night is right for love, except for the werewolf. Whoops, wrong holiday. Happy Valentine's Day to all lovers. The Cupids did a pretty good job, didn't they? P.S. The cheat code for Super Mario Brothers 3. (laughs) I'll save that for next Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that one's that's romantic. That's uh, yeah, yeah. It's really bound to moisten up some panty lines for my on my end of things. So I'm going to write that one down <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and you're anything that's going to moisten up your panties? Yes, that's what I meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to piss your pants? <laughs> yes, I'm pissing right now. <laughs> I did that ages ago. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so turned on. My panties are wet. You're just peeing. <laughs> hey, oh, like that's that. so stupid. <laughs> uh, with high school coming to an end, Chris had his 18th birthday party, which he remembers very fondly. Uh, in attendance were his gal pals uh, and his family, including his half brother, Barb's first son, Joseph Cole Smithy. Uh, this would actually be the last time that uh, Joseph Cole Smithy would ever see the Chandler family. Um, and I know this is like a murder podcast, but nobody dies. Just cool. to be clear. Well, it's, it's not all murder. It's That's not true. Some people stuff. die. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I mean, well, like, not, not like nobody would ever see the Chandler family alive again. Dun, dun. Chris described the moment the cake came out <laughs> as ecstasy. And there he is, Sonichu. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man for uh everyone listening uh richard just very casually changed his background to 
uh, a hyper realistic rendition of <laughs> Sonichu. I'm assuming that's a render from the Sonic movie. Yeah, done up like Sonic. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I had to go look at it. I had to go see the Sonic You. My God, you can find entire collections of all of the comics. I have never like. I feel like anyway. Sorry, I'm sorry. I detracted. My fault. I just I needed to see it, and I went to look, and I saw that, and I was like, My God, it's gone this far. It's continued to this day. This is a long yep. time ago. Sonic You's correct, right? That's why I was shocked. I was like, Wow, I have to show them. But anyway, sorry, my fault. Yep. I'll stop. <laughs> Pay attention. Sonic so last three. Do you have a sniper outside his house? It's needed. Sometimes. Chris described the moment that the cake came out as quote ecstasy. And um, not to be one of those trolls, but he had a suspicious white stain on his jeans in almost every photo. Uh, All right. After his 18th birthday, Chris attended his prom and he went with Barb as his date. But while he was there, one of his gal pals, who was also a crush of his, asked him to dance, and he probably came in his pants right then and there. And he believed that she wanted to date him after this evening, but uh, that was not the case. Uh, After graduation, his gal pals were quickly absent from his life, with the exception of one very nice young lady named Kelly, who he maintained a friendship with, a friendship with into college. Uh, graduation did not go the way that Chris had anticipated. He was upset that all he received was a star pin, quote star pin, for his grades when other people received much fancier awards. Um, Like diplomas? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Just handing people diplomas and they're like, good boy! (laughs) Get the stick off. Great job! (laughs) I believe a star pin was for honors i think is what it's for but like other people got like valedictorian and like you know i don't know we had awards shit like that when i was young too i won the young authors award one year i think that's what he's talking about all right um so he attended the ceremony but he was so angry that when he walked up on stage he took his diploma without shaking the teacher's hands or even looking at them and when he was finished he sat at an empty table and he cried Um, In the video where he recalls this incident, he says, quote, he was an autistic boy that came out of his social shell only to get nothing. Oh, why didn't why didn't they give him more? He should be given everything. He's Chris Chan. That's what he thinks. Creator of (laughs) Sonichu. I just think it's funny because he will someday. I just it's a weird attitude that but i guess i don't know when you're on the spectrum i don't know i don't know what to say like the, the, everyone owes me the better things like why man you got to earn that shit people earn that shit i don't it bugs me when people think they deserve yes absolutely and to, and to be fair like his behavior is not solely attributable to being on the spectrum like that like in in, in fairness to any and everybody on Trump, this is not the person you want representing you like that's not because he yeah, i guess yeah for sure this dude has a host of other developmental and and and, and mental illnesses like he, he and who knows what it's just a cocktail of fucking like psychosis and and maladjustment and, and all kinds of different things like this, this yeah. has nothing to do just with his autism i i get that i'm just like i don't know what anyways i know people that do that now like in yeah. the people that i know now i'd be like go fuck yourself go earn it go get it yourself man but like i don't know if i sh- i don't know enough but like ah, i don't know how to say it like i don't want to go and I, I get you guys are saying this but from what my perspective it's like this guy just is a fucking autism guy and he just wants to be the best no he's not the best he doesn't understand that he's not the best he just wants to be the best you know what i mean like he wants to be the very best <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to catch them all all every award there is. You, you slow down richard that one needs to marinate a little bit more christy that was incredible <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you uh. um okay so yeah you know what you're right just like objectively as a lot of the listeners will probably be hearing this he just, he doesn't seem like a bad dude or anything. He just seems like he's weird and autistic 
and doesn't really understand things the same way other people do. We'll get into why he's a shitty person, I promise. Okay. Um, so after high school, Chris and his family moved back to Rutgersville, Virginia, where Chris attended Piedmont, Virginia Community College. Uh, he first wanted to study marketing, but Bob believed there was no future in that for Chris. So uh, Bob transferred Chris into computer-aided drafting and design. Ooh, super supportive parents. Kind of, yeah. What are you um, doing that for? <laughs> I'm going to buy the best community college education for my son, but God damn it if it's going to be real specific because of the whole host of shit he can't do. <laughs> Chris also got his first job at this time at Wendy's. Actually, first and only job at Wendy's. Uh, he didn't perform well at this job. Uh, he only lasted a couple of months. He frequently got into altercations with his coworkers and supervisor uh, as he was able, unable to take any criticism and frequently neglected his duties and worked in a dirty uniform. Well, he should have been the manager. Yes. Exa- exactly. They hired him. Now I'm the manager. Fuck I you. was just going to ask that question. How does this separate him from any other Wendy's employee across <laughs> the entire <laughs> franchise? <laughs> Over the years, people have agreed on one of two reasons that he was fired. One was that he did a Donald Duck impersonation for a child patron that made them cry. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, little boy. I want to hear my Donald Duck. <laughs> you know, it was such a bad impression, too. <laughs> oh, God. That is not a man with control or awareness of what he sounds like. <laughs> The other was that he drew an unflattering caricature of a woman that he worked with. Chris later confirmed that he did upset a child while trying to make them feel better by doing a Donald Duck impression, but that is not why he was fired. Hey, well, I, I'm going to just do it right now. Half, most of the private dicks are here. We solved it. It's because he did the fucking uh, Donald Duck impression because the other one's not as funny. So we solved it. It's solved. That's why I did it. That's why I got fired. Tell the internet. They, that's what they think too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you think the internet is on, like, they're on everyone's side but Chris Chance. Like, that, <laughs> this man has no one in his camp. Like, even prior to anything you could actually attribute to, to just being him being a bad person, nobody was ever on Chris Chance's side. All right. <laughs> I believe, yep. I, I'm start, starting to see why. <laughs> Um, shortly after he was fired from Wendy's, he ended his friendship with his one remaining gal pal, Kelly. He gave several reasons for this, one being that she had a boyfriend, another being that he thought she had a boyfriend, and another being that he just simply forgot to call her for a couple weeks, and she didn't call him, so he was like, okay, friendship's over, I guess. (laughs) I think she has a boyfriend. Fuck that lady. He's supposed to love me. Yeah, well, yeah, we're getting to the good stuff now. The good stuff. All right. Uh, like I said, the beginning stuff is, is a little bit boring, but it's important. So, not to that, me. I, necessary. I'm going to be necessary. honest with you. I don't think a podcast has ever been as thorough about Chris Chan uh, as, as this one. So, uh, congratulations, Celeste. You've done it. You've. <laughs> You've gone yeah. down the K-hole deeper than anyone ever has on Chris Chan. <laughs> that's not true. There is a 61-part documentary on YouTube that's not even done yet. All right, but can you just take can you just take the compliment for a minute and just be like, thanks, guys. No. <laughs> no. Hard no. Anyways, yeah. Chris Chan was no. on. I fucking suck. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say your third best at best. And you know what? You know what else? I'm fat. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Not to be bearing on anybody's quality. Like <laughs> I know. Oh, I can't say that. She's like, no, nope. <laughs> nope. Fat, okay. terrible, illiterate. hold on let me just bang out 59 pages on something nobody's ever written this much about before (laughs) who me can't read it's all it's all in wing digs and she's just talking (laughs) (laughs) she's sat eyes glazed over and just held down a key 
Damn, you guys are on to me. For real though, have any of you ever actually seen one of the scripts I've written? I don't think exactly. so. No. Exactly. No. Okay, so um, <laughs> the Chris Chan antics that the internet would come to know and be intrigued, repulsed, and or full of pity for began when he was 21, when he decided to launch his love quest. Uh, bye, RJ. His goal RJ's was- left. He's like, no, I can't. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> no, I'm not rooting for this guy. <laughs> That is just longer than most private dicks are. I need more vape juice. I'm listening now. It's it's only it's only been an hour. Oh, <laughs> maybe a... I just have more fun on private dicks. <laughs> you can oh, fucking leave. Bye. I'm I'm enthralled, yeah. and we're an hour into this, and I we haven't even hit any meat yet. So I know so this is I'm be crazy. Super, is crazy. I'm super into it. This is very thorough. Uh, this is I knew none of this. All I know about. Uh, him or just the the uh the, the big ups the highlights the, the um you know the overall saga um, yeah. and it's it's fascinating but there was there was a little bit of meat in there uh for the the stuff i didn't know i mean that's good he, yeah i had no idea what his childhood was like other than just i knew his parents were fucking ancient because i've seen the videos that they're in isn't that uh like the older you get? Isn't it a higher chance of having an autism, like child with autism? Like when you yes. have child- yes, hundred percent. There's everything um, like everything like quadruples when you're you get pregnant over the age of thirty five. Like it's like the rate of Down syndrome goes up, autism, um, like things like cystic fibrosis, or like everything. So it's not a shock that he was made from a dusty old yeah. egg up there, and he's fucked exactly. up. Exactly. Hold on. Antique ovens are beautiful. They just don't bake cookies even. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, RJ. That's a lovely way to put it. <laughs> Sorry, I was being purposefully heinous. I feel like RJ just got out of sensitivity training somewhere because that sounds like a training video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe in like the 1960s. Good Lord. I'll start that again for the editing to make it easier. So the Chris Chan antics that the internet would come to know and be intrigued, repulsed, and or full of pity for began when he was 21 when he decided to launch his love quest. His goal was to find a, quote, boyfriend-free gal. Uh, he went pretty <laughs> incel during this phase uh, where he posted extensively about hating any man who has a girlfriend and that he would only pursue women who approached him because approaching women runs the risk of them having a boyfriend. But uh, of course, he believed that women didn't approach him because of his autism, which you can see from like 600 meters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so during his love quest, he created what he called an attraction sign, which was like a personal ad, but that he drew in pretty markers and he held it like a protest sign in public. His attraction sign featured little doodles of his Sonichu characters, which now included Rose Chu, Sonichu's companion. And the ad read as follows. 21 and single white male. Shy, smart, young at heart, computer skilled, humorous, a great thinker and go-getter, natural salesperson, enjoys good parts of life. It's a weird Tinder profile and a homemade postcard. It is, yeah. Diplomatic, okay. friendly, loves his family, peaceful, very creative. He's lonely. Seeking cute 18 to 21 single female companion. 18 to 21 years of age, does not already have a boyfriend, single, or average to slender weight slash body type, white, lives in Charlottesville or Rutgersville area, does not smoke or drink alcohol, happy, positive personality, average to high income, drives a vehicle. If any men read this huge sign, mind your own business. And to all men with girlfriends, except marrieds and blacks, go jump off a cliff. Have a nice day. Except for the marrieds and the blacks. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. What? <laughs> that's yeah. pretty. What? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, pal. I know. I know you're surprised somebody's being nice to black people because you can't fathom that. As uh, <laughs> that's not what I meant. Um, what I'm saying is, why, why, like, you know, uh, like, why are you telling everybody but those people to jump? Like, I don't get why. Because he's only interested. He's only interested in white girls, so he doesn't care if a black man, because he's not going to go after a black man's woman because black men only date black women. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Yes. 
oh there's yeah there, like it sounds like 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 literally off the page he's just like he's basically saying whatever to that but what you're saying reading into it that's what i'm hearing too yeah that's no that is what he's saying he's saying anyone in my dating pool because white women would never date a black guy you don't have to jump off a bridge but everyone else in my dating yeah. pool has to hmm. and if you're married you can you can you can stay too because i'm not going after married women so. yeah what what did I say earlier that everybody got real quiet about? Um, but <laughs> don't be petty, RJ. Just get your point out. <laughs> this, this is how these these kids are. This is the weird kid that nobody liked. They couldn't really pin it. You kind of felt bad for him. But then, like, yes. and I say this from experiencing it in person, some wild mm -hmm. shit happens. Maybe somebody shoves somebody else in the hall and they're just screaming the N-word. And you're like, oh yeah. damn, they're a piece of shit. Got it. Yeah, I've had the same experience. That that whole postcard screams like, like there's six girls like that. You know what I mean? There's way too much to that. Like <laughs> what you want is very specific is what I'm saying. Oh, well, that makes him an asshole too. I know, that's like, what I'm saying. He's, he's so, so yeah. close-minded. He doesn't, like there's no awareness. This dude needed like heaps and heaps and, and hours and hours of therapy. Like he, he needed so much help. And this is why I also think fucking uh barb and bob were super fucking neglectful because you know they were old and tired probably but they didn't see to any of this shit you know fucking what like that like your first goal is to just pull them out of school and homeschool them like that that's gonna fix any problems he's having there come on but that i mean it doesn't exonerate him but he was failed yeah Am I right devastatingly when he posted his attraction sign in the lobby of his college and sat next to it, patiently waiting for women to fight over him, the Dean of Student Affairs, Mary Lee Walsh, happened by and tore it down, allegedly tearing it up on the spot right in front of him and chastised him, telling him this is not the way to meet a girl. Uh, he said that the event, quote, murdered his soul, and he swore lifelong vengeance against the woman and wrote a hate poem entitled Saddest Heart in the World. And because I love you, here it is. Mm. lonesome and sad lonesome and sad the mastermind is very bad in efforts of getting a boyfriend free gal that female dog took my only idea for a fall heartbroken sad and very lonely i may never remove my virginity and with backstreet boys tune i sing my lonesome croon tell me why i'm stuck as a virgin with rage tell me why i so need a cute girl my age Tell me why I ain't ever want to hear you say I have a boyfriend. <laughs> yes! God. <laughs> oh, God. What a banger. That is oh, a banger. Jesus. I would like to see the music video for that. That was exceptional. There is more to this poem. And so deep in dreary thought, a girl was what I sought. A stitch in time will never remove my crying rhyme. I may be destined for loneliness forever. Fate is to blame, whatever. I conclude this cry to say as long as there are no matching girls, my happiness well runs dry. Also, the shortcut on Yoshi's Island is <laughs> to go through the <laughs> cloud. That was just the saddest. That was the saddest heart ever, though. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that was uh, the saddest heart in the world. Okay. Featuring Richard. <laughs> so uh christian put his love quest on the back burner after this letdown and moved on to new projects including writing sonichu short stories and starting a band called christian and the hedgehog boys uh yes. the first album dropped in august of 2001 and it is a banger oh my god the band was made up of chris sonic the hedgehog sonichu shadow the hedgehog and black sonichu which those were new character a new character in his story um, much of this album, all of this album, was Chris screaming, no, much of this album was Chris screaming over Backstreet Boys songs with his own lyrics, just like the poem above. However, he did put that Spanish education to good use yelling over a Ricky Martin song in Spanish. Oh, God, yes. Okay, um, in 2003, Chris
Chris was a before it's time Twitch streamer when he recorded a video of him playing Animal Crossing on the GameCube. Uh, the video lasts about an hour and he takes the viewer on a tour of his two towns, Quickville and Quick City. Uh, Quick is spelled CWC, which stands for Christian Weston Chandler. Uh, Quick was also the name he used for his Game Boy stop motion videos and his website. Uh, in this video, he sings two songs from his smash hit album, including the cover of the Macarena called Yellow is a Mellow Color and his cover of I Want It That Way, which is the Virgin with Rage song. <laughs> well, as, as evidenced by his poetry, uh, <laughs> rhyming and syllables are not his strong suit. Yeah, I think it works. <laughs> Yellow is a mellow color. Hey. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, that's just because you're on the same brave wavelength, Celeste. Yeah, she's been. <laughs> you've gone too far down the hole. Christian Chandler, yeah. like this. I'm reaching my hand out. You've gone too far. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I'm peeking right now. Yeah. Right. This is when I peek right here. Right now. It's all downhill from here. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, he's, he's singing over the video while his animal character, animal crossing character, is standing in front of a piano. And he sent this video to Nintendo to consider for Nintendo Power Magazine. And not only did they consider it, they published an article about Sonichu's Quickville documentary in 2004. I don't have them that far. I don't have them into the 2000s, so I don't have that one. That's sad. Okay. So later in 2004, Chris was back on his love quest. His New Year's resolution was to find a girlfriend, and he started the year by publishing a new poem on his website and never went to disappoint. Here it is. Here you see a sad and lonesome Christian C. Without girlfriend love, he feels an older age as he is still stuck as a virgin with rage. He searches low and high to the end. The only delay is the fear of being already beaten by a boyfriend. Why do all the girls have to be already taken? A real shame. Boyfriends of all girls of possible matches for me are really lame. As I sit and sigh, I watch the girls go by, afraid of a lame interception. I sit out in the open without hesitation. Matching girl descriptions are free. I wish one girl would notice and approach me. It would be way past cool, per se, if I could get a girlfriend by Valentine's Day. But for now, as you see, I am a sad and lonesome sea. Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about oh, this wow. guy, man. I, I just, this is the other thing is like, if everybody's telling you they have a girlfriend, dude, maybe at some point you don't think it's everybody else's fault and it's your fault for being creepy and weird. I think I think the self awareness thing is um, not uh, okay. really there at all. Okay, <laughs> so, doesn't ex it does not exist? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of a big ask. Okay, <laughs> tell me why. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Chris believed that the way to get women to notice him this year would be to start a monthly Sonichu newsletter called Sonichu's News Dash. He ended uh, every edition of his newsletter with a personals ad for the ladies to skip to because they would be super wet for each issue. Yeah, just, just so you know, that does work. Oh, my. I can tell. Yeah. Hell yeah. So where, where can I get your newsletter, RJ? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> So Christy was, was agreeing with me because she writes to them all. I just, I pay her on a monthly basis to just put my name in there on some of them. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. So I don't even know where you can get it. You have to ask the webmaster. Christy, it's, so. It hasn't been going very well though, because only married and black women keep applying. So yes. RJ's really, it just. <laughs> Which is all I'm looking for. So it's actually, I just get, I just get Christy scraps and I'm, I'm happy. Y'all are wild. He ended up releasing 10 issues in total, and the ad, or his personals ad, went as follows. Okay, Christian W. Chandler is 21, 22 as of February 24th, 2004, and single seeking a female companion of the following qualities. 18 to 21 years of age, 18 to 22 as of February 24th, 2004, does not already have a boyfriend, single, blonde or brunette, average or slender body type, does not smoke or drink alcohol, five feet or taller, lives in Charlottesville or Rutgersville area, white, average to high income, drives a vehicle, happy, positive personality, a caring girl. 
Christian is very shy and very thoughtful and will only accept person-to-person -person encounters, no emails or phone calls. So if you are interested, he can be found around Piedmont Virginia Community College or Fashion Square Shopping Center. When getting his attention, approach and say hi to him. Do not flirt with him from a distance. He will not be able to notice. To find Christian, he'll be wearing the Sonic U medallion. Oh my God. No little people and no talking to me on the phone first. You come right behind my dumpster in this small town and I'm sure to, I swear to God, I'm not going to rape you. Like <laughs> my God. Is that like my god, dude? That's not gonna work. I'm mad now. I, I I'm so gonna hate this guy. Do not flirt with me from a distance. Yeah, exactly. Like, I want to notice. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna peek around at your behind wherever the weird dumpster you are and just go like, "Hey, oh, that's Christian. amazing. <laughs> that's amazing." <laughs> no little people. At least we said it. Five footer taller, skinny. Um, I don't like this guy. I'm not. I'm now upset. Well, you're okay. You're holding him to way too high of a standard, though. Like, yeah, yeah. not that you should be upset, but like, just the, the specificity of it is it, like, oh, of well. course, of course, is all I mean. Yeah. But I mean, like, I've heard three different ones now, and they're all, they just get more and more specific. Like, fuck you, man. You know what I mean? Like, you're annoying. I can see why yeah. people think he's annoying. And I'm not, like, you know what I mean? I'm not educated him at all. I'm getting educated now. And I understand why. Yeah, you're... no, it's 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 dawning on you. That's good. Yeah. So, soon you'll just accept and. and... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the ads varied slightly from issue to issue, and the last six of them also included the link to his Match.com profile, which seems like um, not allowed because that's basically email. Yeah. Christian began distributing these at his college, and that bitch, Dean Student of Affairs, Mary Lee Walsh, issued a cease and desist letter against him uh, to stop distributing it. And in an attempt to settle out of court, Chris sent Mary the following email. Mary, I've slept on it, and I realize that note hanging is not the way to get attention, and I don't really want to meet with either you or Susan, no offense. Uh, I assume Susan is another administrator. I'll tell you what, let's forget the meeting. And if you allow my newsletter to stay in distribution, I will do all of the following. I will never hang notes on the wall again. I will consider stopping my silent treatment on Susan. I'll consider knocking you and Susan up my scale of respect by two points. Zero equals no respect, <laughs> 10 equals respect. Please reply via email. <laughs> fair, fair, fair offer, I think. Yeah, coming from the guy who said, all right, I will take one of, of the things that I've said about Canada back. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> oh, wow. I've never thought of doing that. That's an amazing idea. Just going like, Richard, you got a meeting with HR today. You're saying something fucked up. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to meet you, but I'll tell you one thing. I won't say it again. And if you forget about all this, I won't, I, I'll let you get some points in my fucking magic point system. Okay. So. <laughs> little cherry on top. I'll consider canceling the silent treatment on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not going to do it, but I will consider it. It's actually, that's actually objectively funny. That's a funny way to deal with like an authority figure. Nope. Yeah. I don't agree. Just what? You oh, can't do that? Sure. That's not how this works. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, Mary responded professionally and said, the meeting needs to happen anyway, Chris. Uh, so Chris declared war on her on his website. And My he gosh. said that he would incite the masses who would demand the return of News Dash so he can get a girlfriend. And during this meeting with Mary and Susan, he allegedly performed a cursier hameha which is where he mimics Goku in Dragon Ball Z and blasts imaginary rays of bad luck upon his enemies with his hands. I never thought of that either. You're pulling to an office and you just go, Hayuga! Hayuga! And you're like, what? They're like, what are you doing? Like, Ryu! I'm Ryu! Hell, she, she disrespected him. She deserved more, in my opinion. He went light on it. Oh, wow. So All right. many good ideas. Fun, fun twist. Uh, what if, what if Mary just like was head over heels with Christian and was taking all those down so no one else would steal them from her? Oh, that's true. I never thought of that. That's probably what it wow. is. I'm sure of it. Actually, yeah. that was more of a private dicks thought. But <laughs> you're having private thoughts about dicks. What? I was only half listening. <laughs> and always, Richard and Rick are always in my thoughts. 
Mm. Oh, that's so sweet and creepy. <laughs> okay, I want to show you guys just real quick. Oh, <gasps> Yeah, I bet that bitch regretted it. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's that's it. That's the whole thing. I just wanted you guys to know what it looks like, what he did in a meeting with the administrators of his college. That's what I'm saying. This is this is like, I, I think that's brilliant. I think that's hilarious. Like, what do you do to that? You got a guy how you can you like how you yeah. deal with this guy after? Like, it's actually fucking hilarious. Saying no to the meeting's yeah. hilarious, and then just going in there with Dragon Ball Z attacks is hilarious. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so great. The administration ended up reporting his interaction to his parents, uh, who were pretty pissed, probably pretty embarrassed. Chris stayed in college and distribution of the newsletter was restricted to his website for now. So Chris decided to take a different route to attract a woman in July of 2004, still determined to make his New Year's resolution a reality. His new strategy was called the Red String of Fate. He went to a local mall, bringing with him a paper heart attached to a red string. The heart read, pick me up and return me to my owner. So he would sit somewhere and then as a woman passed by, he would throw the heart in their path and in his fantasy, the woman would then pick up the heart, read it, and follow the red string back to him. Uh, after four consistent days of doing this, a mall security guard told him to knock it off. <laughs> I keep wanting to pick up this heart, but then I see it's you at the other end. Can you leave? You're crushing me over here. Uh... Um, he posted about this uh, interaction on his website, and he described that a, quote, jerk hop approached him. And Chris squared up, shouting no right in his face. And he went back the following day and tried again. This time he was banned from coming to the mall without his parents. Awesome. Uh, jerk Ops, by the way, would become the name of the enemy armies in his Sonic 2 series. He's just 22 years old and he saw him go to the mall without his mom and dad. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. See, Richard gets it now. <laughs> It broke me. I went over the ledge. I'm done now. It's <sighs> fun. <laughs> wow. Uh, five days later, he was suspended from college for one year. He wrote uh, that his parents were so mad about it that they were going to write to the president of the United States. Now, RJ, who was awesome. that in 2004? Uh, George W. Bush. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is that man not illiterate? Um. Yes, uh, to, to <laughs> I think the, the mainstream uh, liberal media at that time, um, which, uh, which I think over, over blew it. I, I, here's my problem, uh, not, not to get political. I do not like underselling George Bush because I think he knows exactly what he did and he's an evil fuck. So I'm not going to let him skate on that just because everyone thinks he's stupid. Okay, so quick question though. Was he illiterate, yes or no? I, doubtful, but uh, it's fun to say so. Okay, so you're saying that that man knew how to read and he didn't get Chris back into college? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I thought that was trying to be a burn on George W. Bush, but... This is set up for you. <laughs> my bad. That was good. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Survived me stomping all over it and everything. All right. Um, the college stated that in order for him to return the following year, he would have to attend anger management classes, get a psychological evaluation, and receive social skills counseling. Uh, his banishment from both the mall and the college sent Chris into a deep depression he said could only be lifted by getting a boyfriend-free gal for Christmas. Wow. I'm saying boyfriend-free gal bugs me. Like, why is he saying it that way? It's a single person, a single woman. Why do you have to say boyfriend-free? I don't know if we discussed this earlier. I feel like we did because Chris is retarded. <laughs> oh, my God. And she's allowed to say that, that because he actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh. I, uh, I see here I was worried about uh, saying too much, getting canceled. I was canceled the moment I accepted the Zoom meeting, wasn't I? You are welcome. I told you a while ago, you've done over 20 episodes of Private Dicks with me. You've been canceled for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, I know. You're... You're famous right wing racist Richard Stoodle. So that, that right wing now, right? God damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hard, hardcore, hard R Nazi. Uh, 
I'm losing all Bright, the respect points. Breitbart editor in chief, Richard Stoodle. <laughs> Storm, <laughs> Stormfront contributor. Richard's just fucking had enough. He's oh. like, I'm not racist. I'm not racist. Uh, it's not even that. It's just like, I am though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> People would take me seriously. It's not a fucking joke. Stop uh, laughing about it. I've got an agenda. So good. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So he decided to pursue women at another college campus for a while, but he ended up getting distracted, completing his psychiatric evaluation and counseling. His psychiatrist noted that he had an obsession with finding a female companion, as well as a fear of speaking to women based on the risk that they may already have a boyfriend. She recommended further counseling as well as medication. Uh, Chris did not attend any further counseling beyond the college requirement, and he opted out of any medication beyond his antidepressants he had been on for some time already. Uh, Chris would get assessed several times in his life, court ordered, but this would be the last glimpse we would get into a professional's opinion. Hey, did I miss something? Why did you get court ordered testing done before? Oh, this wasn't court ordered. This was just by his college. But in future, he will get assessed several times, all of which will be court ordered. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> all of which will be court ordered. He goes to court a lot. All right. Okay. <laughs> Great. Can't wait. <laughs> Heading into, he's like borderline a sex offender already. No one can be surprised by this very yeah. true oh, no yeah. super creepy <laughs> the hard thing is just yeah. asking and anyways yeah all right heading into 2005 with all the free time on his hands chris got really into recording vlog style videos of himself often singing over popular songs with his own lyrics and lamenting about his lack of lady companionship and filming his family around the house uh the other ones aren't interesting but filming his family was interesting because it's revealed that chris's family has a serious problem with hoarding Tell me why. Uh, See, they could have. If I knew this, I could help them out and I could give away a bunch of their shit at my shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, all you got to do is get on Zoom, throw up a big picture that says unethical behind you. No one will know. <laughs> um, uh, this is also like the first that we see of his parents. Uh, so we see both of them, like the internet, let's say, first sees. Uh, that both of them, his father especially, are elderly, and uh, he looks like a young man hanging out with his grandparents, but uh, they really struggle to keep up with him, and they're frequently hurt by his attempts at affection because Chris is so large and they're so fragile. He's breaking hips, like, <laughs> sorry, <Yeah>. mom. <laughs> well, he's, like, really affectionate, especially with his mom, and so he'll, like, go to hug her or something, and she'll be I like, I made a Ow. joke earlier that that makes me a little bit terrified of. A cursory yeah. Google search will show you how affectionate. I don't need to know. I'm not no Google spoilers, searching. But... Oh, but you do. You need to know. I will eventually, but I want to know when you tell me. Oh, you will. Where did the babies come from, Richard? Where know, did the babies come I from? I fucked with you last week, so. I <laughs> Christian's place, the exact place they go back to. Uh... Uh, Chris will go on to be well documented by the most juvenile and insensitive morons on the internet, but the first time that he was ever um, documented in the wild was when he was featured in the blog of a young woman named Anna in 2005. She recounted the tale of an awkward man who would come to the mall where she worked every day, where he would pace for hours, just pacing and pacing, and occasionally would have an awkward outburst. Uh, it became a ritual for the employees of her store to watch him day after day, and then one day one of them waved to him and he waved back. And this continued for a few days until finally he came in and he approached Anna. He began their interaction by saying, you look about 19 years old, right? Uh, she was 19 and she found it very funny in a laughing at you, not laughing with you kind of way. And he then fumbled a pickup line asking her, do angels have names? Can I try? Can I do it? Do, do angel? I don't know the punchline, so I can't do it. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Good job, Richard. Sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> I, need the, I need the second part for it to be efficient. There is no second part. <laughs> oh, that's all? That's all he says? Yeah, oh. do angels have names? <laughs> Hot. He nailed it. Do, do they? <laughs> um, well, I thought like Raphael and um, Lucifer. Yeah, my son's named after a guy, uh, after an angel, so yes, they do. <laughs> uh, 
I really thought you were just going to start naming Ninja Turtles, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael's the only turtle that's a painter and an angel. Michael, 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 Angelo. My, Michael is a Michael is an angel, but he's not. Not Michael Angelo. Well, maybe maybe that's where it came yeah. from, Michael Angel, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Michael <laughs> Angel, yo. <laughs> I love that. That's that's what I'm calling him from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so the two introduced themselves and uh, Chris attempts to ask her out for ice cream. She declined, but said they should connect online. Chris handed her a crudely drawn homemade business card, which had both Sonic and Sonichu on it, and had his email address and website. Um, the two didn't really communicate much at first, uh, but despite her first impression, the two did actually end up becoming good friends. Uh, in February of 2005, Chris entered a contest to create an ad for the new Adult Swim TV show Harvey Birdman. Chris created a video where he says that Harvey Durdham won his case against Mary Lee Walsh, who broke his heart. And then he sent that in. Did you get it? Sadly, his entry was not featured, and he thought this was bullshit. What is bullshit? It sounded really good. <laughs> it sounded really good. <laughs> <laughs> if I were Adult Swim's lawyers, I would be scouring over those contracts to see if we could go back and retroactively use that. <laughs> That is right up their fucking alley today. Yeah. He got really into making his Sonichu comics during this time. Much of the plot was based on his experiences. Uh, some of the topics include conflicts with jerk ops or security guards uh, and managers in places where he sat with his attraction signs. Uh, his conflict with Mary Lee Walsh and his imagined rivalry with his childhood friend's uh, fiance. It's during this time when he really starts blurring the lines between reality and fantasy, uh, writing more and more of his real life into his comic books. Uh, he was also featured in Nintendo Power Magazine again around this time for his review of Sprung, a Nintendo dating simulator. And in his review, he boasted that Sprung had given him the confidence to start approaching women despite the insanely high boyfriend factor. And it was pretty incel, and Nintendo really should have filtered their shit a little better. What? Yeah, exactly. Like, well, well let's get the guy that took two famous things that aren't even our properties you know what i mean at all and smashed them together <laughs> together in our magazine saying that good thing there's if there wasn't lots of girlfriends i'd really be like this spring thing like what the fuck is nintendo bad move boys girls uh in march of 2005 history was made when a young woman by the name of hannah who worked at the coffee shop in chris's favorite mall approached him after days of watching his pacing and asked him out uh chris immediately came in his pants and once she left, he picked up the chair that he had been sitting on and spun it around. Flinging cum everywhere. Like <laughs> Cum sprinkler? Um, that's, that's for your mom, Celeste, by the way. <laughs> I know. Oh, man, she was pissed about the MSN one. She was pissed about Catfish Story. She was like, I can't listen to this, Celeste. I'm like, no, it's almost done. The hot cam on the feet was the last thing. <laughs> you, you, not only does your mom listen to it cool yeah whatever but like no no you just gotta stick with it wait just to get, get through it <laughs> oh god damn frequently yes the two went on a date at starbucks where he showed her some of his sonichu drawings and took notes while she talked saying that it's important to be attentive when on a date with a woman <laughs> um Later, Anna approached Chris and told him that Hannah had asked him out as a joke. And when Chris confronted Hannah, she said that it was true. And Chris was so distraught, he let out an ear-shattering no right in the middle of the mall and was swiftly escorted out by mall security. Where are your parents? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were allowed here without your parents. They're getting Baskin Robbins. It's my 10 minutes I only have. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just thinking about his parents in Baskin Robbins, like, uh oh, get the leash, and she's like running to go get him. <laughs> get the like, leash. But, but like one of them's in a walker, the other's in a wheelchair because <laughs> last Tuesday's hugs were too hard. So yeah, <laughs> just not getting there fast enough. All right. In June of 2005, Chris got in some hot water for planting himself in a Walmart McDonald's with his attraction sign while he worked on some of his projects. Uh, he was approached by security and the manager and asked to leave, which resulted in an argument and the two leaving to call the police. 
While they were gone, Chris did what any six-year-old would do and hid the sign, and when they returned, pretended it was never there. He was then banned from the Walmart, and Chris misunderstood this to mean that he was just banned for the day. He returned to the Walmart the next day and attempted to set up his projects at the McDonald's again. This resulted in another confrontation with the McDonald's manager and then the Walmart manager. Chris claimed during this confrontation he sang and danced about his right to be there, and then the managers let him out of the store as Chris gave them the finger and several cursier hamehas on the way to his car. As Chris was leaving, he nearly hit the manager with his car, and Chris would go on to brag about this power move. As he should. Uh, he had another altercation at a Target, where he was loitering shortly after this, looking for a boyfriend free gal. Uh, during this altercation, two managers and three security guards ended up tackling him and handcuffing him before security took him to the county jail. Uh, he was not kept, but his mother attempted to sue the store for this, and it was thrown out of court, unsurprisingly. And he was now banned from the Target as well. Oh, man. How many big box stores can I get banned from this month? Let's do this, mom and dad. Oh, Come that on. man is running out of options for everyday low prices. <laughs> he was also banned from Best Buy, but I don't I don't know why. I think vandalism. Best Buy. Yeah. Oh, vandalism. I know it's I know it's probably not gonna come up now, but how, how deep is the GameStop story? Oh, it's uh right around page 40, I guess. Damn. All right. Uh I'll be patiently waiting until then. All right. Uh, Chris began to form a conspiracy theory that all of the men where he lived were conspiring to cockblock him, but he fell off this campaign when his interests were expanded by a female friend named Megan. She introduced him to My Little Pony and Sailor Moon. And again, ahead of his time, Chris became a full-blown brony and started incorporating them into his work. He also discovered online shopping during this time and racked up quite the bills, spending his money on rare Sailor Moon and My Little Pony merchandise on eBay, some for him and some for Megan, as he was attempting to court her. And uh, he also bought a lot of pornography and sex toys. Of course. As one does when they're courting. Yes. <laughs> so there's nothing that says love like Sailor Mercury statuettes and dildos. Oh, absolutely. Um... In September of 2005, Christian returned to college, and in May 2006, he graduated with an associate's degree in computer-aided drafting and design. Uh, he didn't get a job right away, or ever, and instead poured himself into his comic series. Uh, he abandoned his attraction signs during this time, instead focusing on his courtship with Megan. She did not return his feelings in any way and said so many times over several emails where she begged him to stop touching her. <laughs> Imagine having to send that email. Like, <laughs> oh god! Just got that little red flag next to it. You know, <laughs> urgent. Stop touching me. Yeah. <laughs> how about this? Uh, how about a counter offer? I keep touching you, and I put you up two points in my respect pool. Okay, <laughs> how's that sound? <laughs> uh, if you do not comply, I will kami kami how you. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Megan would come to be another force in his downfall into internet infamy, largely due to his undercredited feelings for her, so she's important. Um, and in addition to the struggle with young love, Chris faced the loss of his beloved dog, Patty, in 2006. You had to put the death, they said there's no deaths in this, it's the saddest death of all, Patty. Th there's no way that dog's death wasn't a mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, she probably had a fucking heart attack because she was just so sick and tired of watching him make these YouTube videos. Oh, my God. So, like, <laughs> but, like, you also know how, like, intuitive dogs are with feelings. Like, when, like, you're, like, you know, mad, they just, like, pick up on that. Can you imagine how high strung that fucking dog was with anxiety 24-7 yeah. being in his presence? Like, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, also, it lives in a hoarder house with yep. two fucking geriatrics like so it goes missing for three months because it's under a pile of rubbish <laughs> patty's not even dead she's still in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> mom dad i found patty underneath this 1989 wall street yeah they just think that she's dead but she's actually just buried under a pile of like old blankets in february of 2007 chris released a dvd called yep i'm on tv which was a collection of all the times that he'd been on TV, which there was actually several. He, he's going to weaseling his way into like news stories. 
uh, as well uh, as a collection. No, no, he's him, and news people are around, and he's around them, and they go, "Nope, that's the story," and they took it. It's yeah. <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean like this dude had like the weirdest amount of like luck and then like the, you're right though the attention did come to him but he is like the internet's forrest gump like okay. he's just been like around <laughs> forever and just like always inserting himself oh god okay sorry it's just i feel like this guy's enough of a, a tear like a force that anybody's gonna point a camera at him doesn't matter if like yeah. nowadays they probably got like smartphones like this. Fuck yeah, he's probably getting recorded all. I don't know where he's at, but anyways. Okay, so yeah, uh, all the times he's been on TV, as well as a collection of his home videos. Uh, he combined his birthday with the launch party for his DVD, which he distributed to friends, family, and some of his old teachers. Uh, on this day, he also released uh, one of his most known videos, wherein he donned a blazer and gave advice to teenagers. Uh, this included abstaining from drugs, cigarettes, and alcohol, and encouraging teenage boys to purchase a My Little Pony and treat it like a girl they like to learn how to treat girls, and uh, for teenage girls to purchase a Transformer and do the same thing, but for boys. Yeah, that's how that's how we learned sex ed. Uh, yep. In school. In America, yeah, yeah, the bag of flour. Yeah. You take it home and, and you treat it nicely and whisper sweet nothings into its ears. No, spe- specifically uh, a purple My Little Pony. Oh, my bad. My bad. I guess you do things differently down there. You had the option, but um, we lunch wasn't uh, ever served, so we ended up eating the flour, uh, and uh, and then we just went with the My Little Ponies and Transformers. Yikes. M- America, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he also tells teenage girls that they need to consider dating less attractive men and to stay with the first boyfriend that they choose forever. And he closes his speech out by demanding that they all need to be straight and only straight for the good of the human race. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) No. In March of 2007, Chris attempted to regain contact with his half-brother, who he hadn't seen since his 18th birthday. Uh, In his email, Chris says that his mother, Barb, still loves Cole very much. uh, And Cole's response was cold and blunt. He described growing up with two deeply neurotic parents who regularly used physical punishment, including beatings and cold showers, and being surrounded by hoarding conditions. He says Barb hid the identity of his true father from him for his entire life, and he came to deduce on his own who it was, though she refused to confirm it. He also says that Chris's father, Bob, is an absolute bastard and that he can't stand him, and he has no desire to be around him or Barb. He concludes the email by saying, you and I may be related, but your mother only loves you. Uh, The two exchanged more emails in the coming months, mostly surrounding Cole trying to get to the truth about his father, Um, and uh, Cole requests to be informed when Bob dies, as he wished to celebrate. (laughs) 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 Wow. Tell me me when your dad's dead, because I'm going to get drunk. (laughs) Get him, Cole. Fuck Bob. Okay. um, In May of 2007, Chris makes his debut on YouTube with a gameplay video of the game Soul Calibur, which is underwhelming, all things considered, but we all got to start shaving our family somehow. In July of 2007, Chris entered a contest to promote the Parappa the Rapper Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown video game. Holy fuck, that is too many words for a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Paw Rapper the Rapper 7, or whatever the fuck it is. That would be fine. Uh, the contestants had to create a video of them performing a rap from the game, And Chris's video featured him in his room, kicking and punching the air, spinning around and rapping while clearly reading the lyrics off of the computer screen. Tell me why. (laughs) Um, It was barely coherent, honestly. And he edited the video with several completely uncoordinated video effects, (laughs) including a banner that says birthday boy appearing for no reason. Amazing. Um, likely due to a combination of Sony wanting to appear compassionate for people with disabilities and the low number of contest entries, Chris's video made the top 10 and could be voted on by the public. <laughs> they, they did not, there was not a low amount. They were in a boardroom going like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. We're putting it up there. <laughs> Put it we're there. putting it up yeah. there. <laughs> this is going to make us so much fucking money. That's what they did. Guaranteed. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with that line of thinking. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, there's a million, uh, but one of them stands out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not mm. for its talent, <laughs> but for its insanity. <laughs> yeah, no, we're accessible. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> winners of the contest would receive two PSPs and a trip to Seattle. And Chris believed that if he won the contest, what's going to do with two PSPs? I'm about to tell you. Gosh. All right. Okay. So Chris believed that if he won the contest, he could give one of the PSPs to Megan and take her on the trip to Seattle, where she would fall in love with him and touch his pee-pee. All right? Oh, amazing. Yes, oh, of course. The old give a girl a PSP for to touch your pee-pee. I see that trick. <laughs> Here, hold this PSP, but take away the S. <laughs> It's just his, it's just his dick underneath the PSP, and he moves another way quickly. <laughs> gotcha. Psych. The S is for psych. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh god. Okay. Um, Chris campaigned hard for votes in this contest. He he handed out flyers at a local game shop to complete strangers, <laughs> and he sent emails to everyone he knew, like old teachers, family friends, everybody. And he even made several fake accounts just to vote for himself over and over. And he left himself a glowing review, calling the contestant a wise and brilliant autistic warrior. Awesome. I, at this point, firmly believe without the damage uh, from the childhood and maybe without the autism, this guy would be president of the United States of America. Just because... (laughs) He has the drive to do whatever he puts his mind to. He goes 110% on it. Now, whatever his thoughts are insane. How fucking dare you? We have never elected a disabled man for United States president (laughs) without them being filthy rich. All right? Oh, that's right. Sorry. He wasn't filthy rich. Fuck. You check yourself, man. (laughs) All right? (laughs) You don't get to be fucking president just because you're any old kind of disabled. You got to be disabled and loaded. That's sorry, my fault. That's I forgot right. about the money factor. And you know lots what? Lots of those. Well, mm-hmm. it's not his fault. <laughs> Janet hasn't appeared to contract him to kill a man for 80 million pounds yet, but it'll come. Oh, that's true. Can his body be scanned to open a safe at the bottom of the ocean? Oh, I don't recommend scanning his body ever. Yeah. <laughs> for any reason. All right, so uh, Chris did not end up winning the Parappa the Rapper Master Onion Chop Chop video game with ridiculously long title contest. No! What? He did not. Shocker. I know. After all of his his freaking legwork, his boots on the ground, his fraud, he didn't win a damn thing. That's disgusting. (laughs) Yeah. He won won, uh, being in the top 10. That should be good enough. Especially for Chris Chan. He likes losing. Yeah, he's very reasonable. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So uh, upon his loss, he wrote a Max Caps Lock angry email to Sony where he whined about never being in a hotel bed with his sweetest friend and blaming them for his perpetual virginity because they are ableist against the autistic. I'm just picturing the meeting after when they get that letter. Like, see, I told you, Jim, we shouldn't put this guy on the fucking top 10. But come on, how could we not? Like, I told you, we're going to get all caps letters. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He also went after the actual winner. Um, He basically was like, well, he's alphabetically first. And that's the only reason that he won. Even though I watched the video, it was way better. Um. There was also like there was rules to the contest that the actual winner technically did break, and I agree with that. But it was just better, so I don't really care. Um, <sighs> Chris also whined to Megan about his loss because he's an idiot, and she tells him she's had enough with his creepy behavior. I never would have gone with you to Seattle. Like I don't like you, just so we're clear. But I'll still be friends with you. And so she's like, yeah, we'll still be friends, but knock this creepy obsessive shit that you're doing like off right now. Give me a PSP. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And Chris fires back at her about letting her other friends physically touch her when she tells him not to, specifically one gay friend of hers. And he confessed to her that he is a homophobe and that he is afraid of them because he, quote, fears the temptations of falling off the straight path. Right. <laughs> it's the first honest homophobe though because that's why people are homophobic they're scared they're gonna like it every time uh-huh. so he's the first honest uh-huh. homophobe it's fantastic yep. 
Well, he tells her that whenever he feels those temptations, he mentally shoves some pussy in his face until he has recovered. <laughs> nice, dude. That's, yep, that's the grind. That's what being a straight male is all about. You just gotta, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta dig deep. <laughs> dig deep into the recesses of your mind. I feel his pain because every now and then I remember what it's like to have a nice, hard penis. And so I'm like, vagina! <laughs> He's like, oh shit, I'm slipping again. Christian, Christian has an uh, amazing lesbian perspective. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway, yeah. So in case you fear the temptation of falling off the gay path, just mentally shove your face in some (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) I'll remember that trick. All right, uh, so this is kind of an interesting insight into his sexuality and his eventual identity change later in life, um, which we'll get into. But I like I don't fully understand why Megan put up with this shit for so long. But yeah. I think a big part of it was that Chris spent a ton of his parents' money and his disability money buying her shit. Yeah, absolutely. How long has she known him for, though, at this point? Like when you're saying this, like what what you put it up for? Because like, is it because she feels? It, it, did she have the same thing as me, where I kind of felt bad for this guy? Now I'm just like off and feeling. Bad yeah, for him. I think so. They've been friends for like four years. Oh, okay. So she would have known how fucking ridiculous of a person he was. So it's probably the money. Then you're probably right. Yeah. In October 2007, Chris was introduced to the internet trolls when a photograph of him was uploaded to 4chan by an individual who had taken a photo of him playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in a local gaming place, complete with rugby shirt and Sonichu medallion. Good time to meet them. Good time to meet the trolls. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Unethical Podcast. If you're not in the Facebook group, stop being such a silly goose and come find us at Unethical, the official Unethical Podcast group. If you find you just can't handle the anticipation until the next episode, then it's a great time to join our Patreon, where we have a ton of extra unethical content, and of course, our brother podcast, Private Dicks. And in case you didn't hear the good news, Private Dicks is now Public Dicks. Every two weeks, an episode of season one will drop wherever you eat your podcasts, and our lucky Patreon patrons are literally living in the future, listening to new episodes from season two. On the fence about it, have a listen to the trailer and see what you think. If you've got a case, big or small, give the private dicks a call. And yes, the phone number is real. Enjoy! Have you got a mystery that needs solving? Where is Amelia Earhart? We know. Who the hell was D.B. Cooper? Bah, easy. Bermuda Triangle? Probably solve that one next. Here at Private Dicks, we guarantee a mystery solved every episode. That's with a capital G. Every second Friday, the Private Dicks take a client, record their session, and solve the world's greatest mysteries. One by one. Private Dicks solve them, no problem. God, I love just crushing mysteries. Search up Private Dicks on your favorite podcatcher and you can solve a mystery too. The mystery of what's your favorite podcast? It's Private Dicks. Another one solved. If you have a mystery to be solved, call 1-855-PRVTDIX. That's 1-855-PRIVATE-DICKS. Call 1-855-PRIVATE-DICKS and leave us the rundown of the case. Maybe the Dicks will solve it. 855-PRIVATE-DICKS. Because I'm straight when it comes to humans, but fucking gay from old people.